Greetings, fellow moviegoers, and welcome to Movie Central, the place to talk about movies, TV shows based on movies, toys based on movies, games based on movies, and rides based on movies. I'm your host, Mr. CCS, and this is my pet gorilla, George. It's been a while since I talked about the Star Wars saga here on the show, but I figured that since I covered animation for most of this season, why not conclude it by reviewing an animated show based on the Star Wars saga? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's analyze what happened between the second two prequel films, but not without going into a little bit of history. Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones ended with the beginning of a new era for Star Wars. And that era was a three-year-long war known as the Clone Wars. The first ever Clone Wars content released was a video game released in 2002 the same summer Attack of the Clones was released. While no longer canon and not too well received, I think if you have a GameCube, PS2, or the original Xbox, I'd say check the game out. In 2003, however, an animated show was released dictating what happened in between the two movies. And that show was called Star Wars Clone Wars. Created by Gendy Tartakovsky, of Samurai Jack and Dexter's Laboratory fame, the wonderfully animated 2D micro-series was well-received by critics and audiences. While I haven't gone in and seen the show, I know it has some standout moments, like Anakin Skywalker's duel with Asajj Ventress, which to this day is probably one of the best lightsaber battles of all time, and pretty decent introductions to characters like General Grievous. But before the release of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, at Star Wars Celebration 3 in 2005, George Lucas officially announced that a 3D animated continuation at the time of Tartakovsky's show was in the works. But full development wouldn't begin until 2006. <clears throat> After nearly two years, the show was announced to be kicked off with a movie released in the summer of 2008, which combined the first four episodes of the show into a 100-minute animated movie for a theatrical release. The movie, surprisingly considering the franchise, did poorly at the box office and was torn apart by critics, being the lowest rated and lowest grossing film of the Star Wars franchise by far. But what are my thoughts on this film? Today, we're going to find out. This is Star Wars The Clone Wars, the animated movie. <clears throat> As more star systems get swept into the Clone Wars, the Valiant Jedi Knights struggle to maintain order. Anakin Skywalker, voiced by Matt Lanter, and his Padawan learner, Ahsoka Tano, voiced by Ashley Eckstein, embark on a mission that brings them face-to-face -face with Jabba the Hutt, voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. Plotting against them is the evil Count Dooku, voiced by Sir Christopher Lee, and his agent, Asajj Ventress, voiced by Nick Gafferman. Who would ensure that the Jedi's fail? Meanwhile, Yoda, voiced by Tom Kane, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, voiced by James Arnold Taylor, lead the clone army, voiced by D. Bradley Baker, against the forces of the dark side. Okay, so you know I'm tolerant of the three prequel movies and the sequel trilogy, but what I am not tolerant of is this film. My god, the story was terrible, and feels like it's out of a different universe. I mean, who cares that Jabba the Hutt lost his son? Who cares about any of it? Well, the story is terrible and nowhere near as good as the quality of the prequels and sequels, and especially the original trilogy. Is there anything that this film does right? Well, let's find out. No matter what anyone says, all the Star Wars movies, even the bad ones, have at least three good characters. But this film only has two genuinely passable characters. And those characters are Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. As far as Anakin goes, I love the direction they took his character starting with this film, which was expanded upon in the series. He went on to become my favorite character in the entire show, and because prequel Anakin is so unanimously hated on, saying Anakin was good is saying something. I got the chance to meet Matt Lanter, the voice of Anakin Skywalker at Star Wars Celebration back in May. And I got a signed picture of Anakin, as well as a photo with him. If he's at any convention, feel free to stop by and meet him. He's such a kind guy. But back to the character. 
Well, the writing for him sucks. I can forgive it because I love the character so much in this show. Obi-Wan just has a lot of funny moments in this film, such as tricking some one-dimensional bad guy that nobody cares about because he's not in the series. But as far as the rest of the characters, holy crap were they horrible. The clone troopers were so forgettable. This is even more jarring because this show fleshed them out so much and made them so likable. But here, they come off as Ashigaru, which were the expendable soldiers in Japan's military back in the 14th century. I mean, I'll give credit where credit is due. Dee Bradley Baker did an okay job, but he wouldn't really make these characters his own until the show. But again, I can't complain too much as Baker is a very nice person in real life. Yes, I also met him. And the show made the clones so much better. And I can say the same thing about Ahsoka. Speaking of which, oh my god, was Ahsoka awful in this film. This was her introduction, and I'm happy to report as the show went on, she became one of the best Star Wars characters of all time. But my god, God, is this one of the worst introductions to any character I've ever seen in my entire life. For one, she acts like prequel Anakin with the whining. And for another, she's sometimes played for laughs with the baby hut, which, yes, I'll talk about in a minute. The point is, her character is truly awful in this movie and is nowhere near the quality of the show's version. The only positive thing I can say about her is that I like the bond she has with Anakin. Sure, they bond way too quickly, but it was nice seeing this bond's beginning before seeing where it tragically went to. Before we talk about the villains in this movie, I want to bring up the side characters. For one, the Baby Hut is the ugliest looking animated character I've ever seen. I mean, it's so astonishing on how freaking awful he looks. And I've seen messes like the Scorpion King in The Mummy Returns and the titular character in Zilla 98. But this takes the reins for the worst looking animated character of all time. Bumping Scorpion King down to second place and Zilla down to third place. For another, some characters from the movies do make appearances here. Like Padme, C-3PO, R2-D2, Mace Windu... And yes, it is a treat to hear Sam Jackson's voice in this movie, and Yoda. But they don't add anything to the story, and that's a shame, because I love all these characters in the movies, especially R2. But again, the show and other movies did a much better job with the characters, so I can't complain too much. And then we have the villains. Now, there are three main villains and two side ones. The main villain of this movie is Count Dooku, and to be completely honest with you... Well, it is a treat to hear Sir Christopher Lee's voice in this movie, seeing as how he played the character in the movies. I have to say, the voice actor in the show, Corey Burton, is so much better and so much more iconic. Dooku in this movie has nothing to do, except be there for pointless scenes. I mean, admittedly, his lightsaber duel with Anakin was pretty cool, but the movies and show had so much better Anakin and Dooku duels. The other main villain is Jabba the Hutt, and I hated his use here. How on earth do you humanize Jabba? This guy is a freaking womanizer and slave owner, and you guys try to make the audience sympathize with him. Guys, come on. Another thing to note is that the baby Hutt is nowhere in any media outside of this movie and one episode of the show. So why on earth create a character that will never be seen again? Because his father is one of the big bad guys of the franchise. It makes no sense at all and creates a big plot hole. The Emperor, voiced here by the late Ian Abercrombie and later Tim Curry in the show, also makes a few appearances here, but mostly as Chancellor Palpatine, making him more of an overarching antagonist, but I would have preferred to see more of the Emperor in the end because he's one of the best Star Wars villains ever. As for the secondary villains... We have Ventress and Zero the Hutt. Let's start with the latter. Zero is, honest to God, one of the worst Star Wars characters ever. And yes, he's a lot better in the show. But the reason why he sucks in this film is that he's in the movie for the last 20 minutes and he truly adds nothing to the story and is just added to set him up for the show. And come to think of it, he did nothing in the show whatsoever. So why does it matter? 
As for Ventress, her introduction in this version doesn't hold a candle to her first appearance in the 2003 show. That being said, I didn't hate her in this movie, as I did a lot of the other characters. Again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but the show fleshed her character out so much more, and this first appearance doesn't hold a candle to anything her character was in like in the show. Her duel with Obi-Wan was okay and frequently one of the better action scenes in this movie, but still, she has so many better action scenes and lightsaber battles in the show. So, if you couldn't tell, this movie has mostly bad characters, with the only decent ones being from the movies and the halfway decent one not holding a candle to her show counterpart. But with my complaints about the characters, surely the animation is good, right? Wrong! I mean, the animation looks unfinished. It's so stiff. The background animation looks like a matte painting most of the time, and the characters look like clay models. Now, the show's animation is very smooth, and the backgrounds are completely constructed with the CGI from the show. But this movie cheated so hard. This is by far one of the worst-looking animated movies I've seen, and I'd say it's worse than Onward, because at least that had nice background animation. But it's not as bad as the recently released The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. <sighs> I'll get there one day, folks, I promise. As for the music, Kevin Kiner composed the music for this movie. And his distinct style works so well, minus one part where there's rock music randomly for some reason. Star Wars and rock music, two of my favorite things ever don't mix well. And I wish I knew that before I saw this god-awful movie. Speaking of god-awful, that's what the action scenes are. Most of the time, it doesn't look good at all due to the unfinished animation. The battles aren't as cool looking as the shows or even Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. And I already liked those battles to begin with. The climbing the mountain scene is the only good looking battle in this movie, and that scene was still not great due to that rock music in the background. The lightsaber scenes also look stiff, minus Obi-Wan vs. Ventress and Count Dooku vs. Anakin. I mean, come on! Remember the Magna Guards in Revenge of the Sith? They were cool looking in the coolest and closest thing to actual lightsaber wielders made by the droid factories. How were they used in this movie? Badly. Their battle with Ahsoka is so forgettable and so stiff, and it is by far, at least in my opinion, the worst lightsaber battle in the entire series and the franchise as a whole. That being said, yet again, the show had much better action scenes, and they were some of the best parts of the entire show. Speaking of the show, the entire first season was much better than this. The entire movie as a whole wasn't necessary at all, other than the fact that George wanted to make a quick buck. If it was just an arc in the show, then I wouldn't have had as big of a problem with this movie as much as I did. But no, the Clone Wars movie sucks. I hate it. Easily the worst Star Wars movie of all time. and One of the worst movies I've ever seen. I'd rather watch The Last Jedi than watch this movie again. And that was my least favorite Star Wars movie in the saga to begin with. So for that, this movie gets a 1 out of 10. And I hope to never see it again. Well, that's it for this review. Feel free to leave your thoughts on the Clone Wars movie in the comment section below. And tune in next week when I review the much superior show and its first six seasons. With that said, my name is Mr. CCS, this is Movie Central, and that, my friends, is a wrap. See you next week.